Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well still, and welcome to tonight's bonus. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you all know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's bonus, shall we? Really quick before we go any further. I want to share with you guys this. First and foremost, the information that I'm sharing is not mine, nor is it my view. Um, I'm sharing information that I looked into to help create this upload. Um, I know that there is a lot of kind of debate when it comes to certain things like this, uh, the information that I'm going to share with you in the very beginning is something different than most read. It, it, is, it refers to the Nephilim as being watchers. Throughout different publications and such, watchers would be the fallen angel that mated with humans, creating the Nephilim or the giant, the half man, half angel. Uh, <clears throat> also, something to remember. There is a multitude of different texts talking about Jesus and God. Um, I was brought up Roman Catholic, brought up reading the King James Version of the Bible. I've read the Book of Enoch. I've also been studying the Gnostic Bible as of late and a theological book called the Orentia from the Orentia Foundation. There are different views in different publications and there is no 100% right or wrong. The only thing I believe in is Jesus was sent to clear me of my sins and he is the son of God. As far as everything else, I will continue to read multiple different publications and books, scripture, whatever. But the important thing is to remember, this is not a debate. This is not an argument. Take what you like, discard the rest. Just because someone believes in the King James Bible doesn't mean everyone has to. Because for the longest time, the Gnostic Bible was the true Bible. Until the Roman Catholic Church cut it out and threw it away. Historically proven. But the key important thing, once again, is Jesus was sent to cleanse us from our sins. And he is the true Son of, the, Son of God. The true light the good, the loving. Let's get into it. 
I want to start this video off first with the proof of why Nephilim exist and how they are in our government. Nephilim are recorded in the Bible as giants, half angel, half human. They are also referred to as watchers. Today, most people identify them as aliens or lizard people. There have been numerous impossibly sized skulls, skeletons, and mummies found all over the world, including the Americas. There have been hidden by the mainstream museums as they don't conform with their world view or the Nephilim in power are trying to conceal their existence. The concealing of artifacts is not uncommon in the mainstream media. For example, there was a warehouse scene in Indiana Jones where the Ark of the Covenant was stored. And there was a television show called Warehouse 13 that ran for five seasons on that topic. People often call what they don't understand aliens or UFOs. It's very believable that someone in an encounter with a Nephilim would be inclined to describe one as an alien. The government has known about aliens since 1909 and has been hiding it since. In 1995, 500 billion dollars was allocated from the American government yearly for projects involving aliens. This budget will no doubt have grown significantly since then and this budget disregards Congress or any semblance of the government we think is real. Phil Schneider had a face-to-face -face experience in where they burned half of his left hand with some sort of heat energy. He described them as seven feet tall and vile smelling. Gathering what we know from the biblical demons, they have the power to possess and shape shift. These powers combined with human form would give them the ability to change their appearance subtly. Lucifer transformed into a serpent in the Garden of Eden so a reptilian form would be logical. However, using preconceived notions from our pop culture to change into what we think aliens look like to discredit the people who discover them is highly likely. It is obvious that at least the American government has been infiltrated by the Nephilim shown by numerous whistleblowers such as Schneider. The Nephilim are in our world and in our government. They have the ability to change their appearance. And many people confuse them with aliens or lizard people. In the Bible, they are described as giants and hundreds of impossibly tall skeletons, skulls, and remains have been found. These remains are being hidden by the museums and governments for numerous reasons. One reason is that the Nephilim are trying to hide their presence on Earth. Another reason is that it interferes with Darwinian logic. American government has known about the supernatural being since 1909. A former black ops brought a huge amount of evidence to light when he quit. This man is Paul Schneider. And he had a face-to-face -face encounter with the Nephilim where half of his hand was burned off in an attack. In some of the information he brought to light in 1995, one of the most startling facts was that $500 billion yearly has being put into projects related to the Nephilim without the knowledge of the public. These all prove that the Nephilim have a pretty good grip on the American government and possibly many others as well. Now, for hundreds of years, people worldwide have reported encounters with monsters, fairies, demons, and cryptids. To this day, those experiences persist, while many of these same entities have also been encountered through the use of psychedelics. Now, it would be easy to say these are simply archetypal figures, beings of our collective conscious conjured in our mind with anthropomorphic features based on fears or subliminal functions of our psyche. Or we could entertain the ostensibly bizarre possibility these are entities from another dimension, operating on higher realms of existence. These entities are referred to as ultra-terrestrials, beings capable of crossing dimensions at will, often acting as cosmic pranksters. Indeed, Daniel Pinchbeck says he experienced prankster entities 
cross from a psychedelic realm into the real world after encountering them during and in a subsequent week following a trip. When it comes to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Yeti, or whatever you want to call them, there is often a playfulness and or spookiness described in their actions. Tree knocking, eerie screams alert us to their presence until we get close enough where they may offer a glimpse before vanishing seemingly into thin air. Their appearance could be considered another form of a prank, embodying a pri primitive ape-like creature that exudes a noxious odor. Yet, they are able to evade contact with us despite thousands of reported sightings over hundreds of years. Is Sasquatch cosmically trolling us? An intriguing account tying UFOs and Bigfoot together comes from a 1888 meeting between cattle ranchers and a group of Native Americans in Northern California. The Native Americans described three crazy bears that descended from the sky in a small moon, leaving them in the woods before taking off. In another instance, in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1973, a woman named Rifa Hetfield and her daughter were awakened in the middle of the night to a beam of light extending down from the bulbous umbrella shape in the sky, tracking the light where it landed in the nearby woods. The two noticed a grayish, simian creature wandering toward the beam. Before they knew it, both the ape and the craft disappeared. These stories may be apocryphal in nature. It's reported that at least 20% of Bigfoot sightings coincide with UFO events. Jack Carey, a cryptozoologist who has studied Bigfoot for decades, says he believes it's alternatively plausible that a Sasquatch is being abducted by UFOs in much the same way humans are to study its DNA and physical attributes. Carey also ascribes to the idea that something called the Mach Effect could explain the possibility of interdimensional travel. The Mach Effect, which is actually a sound principle in physics, being tested by NASA employs the use of fluctuations created by the body of mass as it accelerates that are in turn used to generate thrust. Kari says he believes the Earth's fluctuations can create momentary tears in the electromagnetic membrane separating our universe with a parallel one, allowing extra-dimensional extra -dimensional entities access into our dimension. The illustrious Jacques Vallely is in the mindset that there is something extra-dimensional going on, sharing a similar sentiment, speaking about the UFO phenomenon. Vallely believes there is something more to the traditional explanation of extraterrestrial race visiting the Earth, instead believing in a possible window to another dimension. We are dealing with a yet unrecognized level of consciousness, independent of man but closely linked to the Earth. I do not believe anymore that UFOs are simply the spacecraft of some race of extraterrestrial visitors. This notion is too simplistic to explain their appearance and frequency of their manifestations through recorded history and the structure of the information exchanged with them during contact. In the 1960s, the CIA investigated an alleged simultaneous encounter with Sasquatch and a UFO at Presque Isle State Park in the all too appropriately named city Erie, Pennsylvania. The ensuing reports were documented as part of the infamous Project Blue Book during which the government investigated thousands of cases involving UFOs. Presque Isle is a peninsula arching out over Lake Erie to form Presque Isle Bay, one of the state's most visited summer tourist destinations. On the night of July 31, 1966, four tourists from New York 
found their car stuck in the sand after spending the day relaxing on the beach. Six of the peninsula. One member of the group, Gerald LaBelle, was sent to call a tow truck while the others remained in the car. Around 10 p.m., police on patrol stopped to ask if they were all right. After being informed that help was on the way, the officers said they would check back within the hour. When the people returned about 35 minutes later, the group said it witnessed something weird going on up there, pointing to a location in the sky above the wooded area. One of the group's members, Douglas Tibbs, went to investigate along with two other officers. The two women in the group, Betty Clum and Anita Hefley, remained in the car while they waited for everyone's return. Tibbets and the officers walked roughly 300 yards up the beach before hearing the honking of the car's horn, hurrying back to see what happened. Clem and Hefley clearly shaken said they witnessed a dull black shape bigger than a man, big head and shoulders, arm like appendages, no hands, no face visible, as though it had its back turned in the front of their car before it lumbered into the brush. When Clem blew the horn, a scratching sound on the hood or roof of the car was reported. In the end, this creature was dismissed by investigators as a raccoon, despite the lady's very distinct description of a bipedal humanoid figure. But what about the UFO? All right, guys. So I don't know if a lot of you remember, but I had a subscriber from Louisiana. I believe it was Louisiana, just off the top of my head that had an encounter with a dog man, two actually, one when he was a kid with his cousin, and it was in the trees. He first saw one in the trees. The second time he had one, he was going through a really bad time, and he had taken a dose of acid and was relaxing in his backyard, and in this dog man came out of the woods with like a necklace on and um it was a it was a very spiritual thing for him and he is 100 percent certain that this creature was real um did it come out of the woods quite possibly did it come out of his subconsciousness quite possibly too who knows i wasn't there and nor were you but this is what he shared with us now we are going to go deep into something that I read that blew my mind. This talks about the cover-ups of the government, Big Pharma, Big Bank, oil, other countries' governments. It goes deep, guys. So couple of minutes ago I talked about 500 billion dollars being allocated well where does that money come from and what is it really used for well this is what it's used for and this is where it comes from this next piece of the upload is a whistleblower that worked for MI6. Government harassment and surveillance of me has increased since going public. I believe this has now become a national security issue. I've had my life threatened. Men situated in the hotel opposite my flat taking photographs of me using high-tech long-range camera which Use blue laser, my phone line, and my girlfriend's mother's phone line tapped. My information hacked into and taken off multiple websites and emails from government officials blocked. I believe this is because I am leaking information on projects classified above top secret, which I will go into detail. The intelligence run drug trafficking is the only classified secret. My name is James Caspold, 
and I worked in MI6 covert cocaine traveling operations with the IRA in London between 95 and 1999. My father, Peter Caspel, was also in M16 and worked with the CIA and Mafia in Rome in 1993 on covert cocaine and heroin trafficking operations. The global drug trade run by many factions of the global intelligence community cooperating together, MI6, CIA, MOSSAD, etc., is worth at least $500 billion a year. This is more than the global oil trade. MI6 control many of the other intelligence agencies in the world. MI6 created the CIA in 1947 and still control them today. This black op drug money, or in classic Orwellian terms, MI6 slash CIA, on non-appropriated funds is being used to fund government and military projects classified above top secret. These operations include huge worldwide UFO cover-up and the building and maintaining of deep underground military bases, or DUMS. There are many of these bases worldwide, but here's a small list. Duluth in New Mexico, Brecon Beacons in Wales, Los Alamos in Mexico, Pine Gap in Australia, the Snowy Mountains in Australia, the Nyla Range in Africa, west of Kindu in Africa, next to the Libyan border, border in Egypt, Mount Blanc in Switzerland, Norvik in Scandinavia, in Gotland Island in Sweden, and many other places. These projects are being run by a secret, unelected international governing body connected to the UN. There are at least 1,400 of these dumbs worldwide, 131 in the United States, with two underground bases being built per year in the United States at this moment. The average depth of these bases are four and a quarter mile underground, some shallower and some deeper. The bases are on average the size of a medium city. Each dumb base costs between 17 to 26 billion dollars to build, which is funded by MI6 CIA drug money. Each underground base employs 1,800 to 10,000 workers. A nuclear-powered drill is being used to dig underground. This drill goes through rock at a tremendous rate and literally melts the rock away to form a smooth glass-like surface around the edge of the tunnels. On May 20th, I personally received information from a former member of the NSA through a third party. I wish to protect this man's identity. And so I will call him G. This is the first time this information is being made public. G was subcontracted by the NSA in the late 80s and worked there until 1992. He was a senior electrical engineer in the Los Alamos underground base in New Mexico. G also worked at the Alamo Gordo Dumb in New Mexico and an underground base in Hawaii. He said the Los Alamos base goes two miles underground and is the size of a small city. While there, he witnessed rows of caged humans, tall gray aliens, and reptilian alien. G says the NSA was very hard on all subcontractors and people were worked very hard under severe conditions. According to G, the U.S. federal government and United States Air Force and the Department of Energy run the Hawaii Dome he worked at. This base goes down two miles and stretches out into the, specific, into the Pacific Ocean. It was here, and it was here that three very tall and muscular Nordic-looking men, according to G, were reptilian human hybrids because their eyes would shift into having vertical slits for pupils, chased him along the motorway there, and threatened to kill him because he had overheard them talking about some piece of high technology. Understandably, G has been emotionally scarred from these experiences and does not like talking about them with people. I was also told on May 23rd from this source that in June there would be a huge amount of HARP engineered earthquakes on the west coast of America. 
and that the dumbs there had already been evacuated and shut down. This was 100% accurate because between the 21st and 28th of June, there were at least 400 earthquakes on the west coast of America. I posted this information on the Godlike Products forum on the net, and within hours the post was hacked into and removed. By an executive order, the NSA is exempt from all laws which do not specifically name the NSA in the text of law, which basically means they can do whatever they want and are answerable to no one. This is because of this interaction with extraterrestrial species and it is twisted view that the people are children and cannot handle the truth. There is currently an internal war waging in the global intelligence community regarding the alien agenda. This is between negative and positive factions. From my understanding, one of the main negative factions in this group centered around MI6 and the CIA called Aquarius. This group is up truth blatantly lying, discrediting, or murdering anyone who gets too close to exposing what is going on. There is also a positive group centered around the naval intelligence called COM-12, which is leaking accurate information regarding the alien agenda into the public arena. When the missile, not plane, hit the Pentagon on 9-11, it hit the naval intelligence section of the building. This was part of an internal war between Aquarius and COM-12 being played out. Aquarius has also listed the help of Hollywood and the mainstream media to twist the facts of the alien agenda and blind the public to the truth. Sir Martin Wakefield Jocum, director for the Telegraph newspaper in 1986, he is also connected to MI6 and is involved with laundering MI6 drug money through a bank in England. Jochum was the director of the bank in England in 87 to 95. Former head of the CIA, William Casey, was head of the council of the media network ABC. Many insiders refer to the ABC network as the CIA network. The gray and reptilian aliens working together with the military in an underground base is called MIEC, Military Industrial Extraterrestrial Complex. This is a malevolent organization, as shall see with the following information. There are also benevolent ETs on this planet. These groups are not part of the Military Industrial Extraterrestrial Complex and are from the Pilatus, the Andromeda, Lyra, Procyon, Tiu City, Circe, Omo. These groups seem to work together in some kind of protective federation. On February 20th, 1954, a delegation of these groups met with Eisenhower administration. In an unsuccessful effort to reach an agreement with the United States Thermonuclear Weapon Program, the stumbling block to these negotiations was that these ETs were not willing to provide technology that may have been used by the military-industrial factions of the Eisenhower administration. These peace-loving, human-looking beings refused to be co-opted into emerging military-industrial extraterrestrial complex in the United States, Britain, Russia, and elsewhere on the planet. On July 11, 1934, the first treaty with the Greys from Orion occurred aboard a naval ship in Balboa. This was one of the most important events in human history because it thrust us into a role we were not repaired, prepared for as regards to being a host to a malevolent extraterrestrial race. The United States federal government disregarded the Constitution of the United States by doing this and not telling the people. It was here that the agreement was first made between the Greys representing the reptilians of Orion and representatives of the United States intelligence, intelligence community. The treaty stated that in return for the Greys providing high technology, anti-gravity, metals and alloys, environment, free energy, medical technology, the government would allow the Greys to proceed unhindered with human abduction, 
This was only if a list of abductees was provided to the government and the abductees returned unharmed with their memories of the events erased. In 1944, the second extension of the treaty was signed. I have very little details of this. In May of 1954, again under the Eisenhower administration, the third extension of this treaty was signed called the Greta Treaty. The Greys and Reptilians blatantly broke the terms of this treaty, as we shall see later in this information. The Greta Treaty was agreed upon at the Holman Air Force Base in New Mexico by the Greys and the Ultra Unit in the NSA. The original document of this treaty and the ET materials can be found today at the NSA faculty facility called Blue Moon underneath Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico. The entrance to this underground base is in the Manzano Mountains. Also at this location is a technological base, technological base of the secretive Department of Energy. The energy devices developed from the gray and reptilian technology are being built for use in space at the DOE base. On April 15, 1964, two intelligent personnel met under Project Plato with the Greys in New Mexico desert to arrange a meeting on April 25th at the Holman Air Force Base. This meeting was to renew the treaty again in a psychological bid to buy time in order to solve the problem of the greys and reptilians. A truly nightmarish situation is now unfolding. Phil, Schro Phil Schneider was a geologist, structural engineer, and underground tunneling expert for the United States government and the United Nations. He participated in the construction of many dumbs in North America and other countries. Phil was murdered by the CIA on January 17, 1996, in his apartment in Wilsonville, Portland, Oregon. In 79, in Duluth, Phil Schneider was drilling into the desert there to build an auxiliary base in the southern end of Duluth, on top of an already existing underground base there. The already existing base had been built by the United States government in the 40s under Operation Blue Note, but afterward had been taken over by the Greys and Reptilians. Over a period of two days, Phil and his team had drilled four holes in the desert and went down several thousand feet. One of the holes kept bringing up dirty dust, putrid odors, and broken off machine bits that were sent down the hole. Boring machines and lasers came back up, damaging, damaged when they were sent down. A probe was then sent down and came back totally missing. Eventually, people were sent down. Phil was the first person to go. He was lowered down into the cave, and when he got down there, standing around ten feet away were two seven-foot greys. He became petrified, but managed to empty one magazine from his pistol into the greys. As he was reloading, one of the greys hit Phil with some kind of particle weapon beam and gave him a very high dose of nuclear radiation poisoning, similar to cobalt radiation, but even worse. Phil's lung burnt out of him, and he has a huge scar running down his chest, which he had showed at lectures, which are available on videogoogle.com. Crazy enough, I'll let you know when I get back to the article, but I was just watching a video talking about, in 1950s, they were, they were talking about the cobalt bomb, which is like the godfather of dirty bombs it technically one hiroshima bomb with like seven or eight ounces of cobalt 59 would actually destroy the world humanity and animals as we know it because when it hits the radiation molecules and this and that or whatever turn it into cobalt 60 just absolutely crazy what the government is doing and we want to believe them and say yet yeah, they they do not have they they don't know the existence of cryptids or aliens or anything this is bs phil schneider was a geologist structural engineer underground tunneling expert who participated in the construction in may 
of 95, he suffered from terminal cancer and began giving talks in Las Vegas describing in detail the underground cities, the government's secret deal with negative aliens, high alien technology being employed by the government, including carbomite element 140, mining on the moon, FEMA in the martial law, and the coming of New World Order takeover the alien NWO genocide agenda to reduce the Earth's population by 85% before 2029 and the host of other stunning revelations. Holy crap. COVID. Phil Schneider was an extraordinarily brave man who knew that he was going to be killed because of this information he revealed. His fingers on his left hand were burned off. His bones were burnt. He was basically cooked. He was in radiation isolation therapy for 400 days plus in a large, in a cave, large metallic vats were found with human body parts, generally g glands. In the vats were high tech stirring devices that stopped the blood coagulating. In Aztec in New Mexico on the 13th of February, 1948, a crashed flying disc was retrieved by the United States military. The crash was 100 feet in diameter and was made of a light metal resembling aluminum and contained ET bodies. A large number of human body parts were also found on board that craft. The above top secret security lid was screwed down on this event tighter than Roswell to stop mass panic. The next day after the crash, the crash, the craft was probably shot down by the military. The government brought up the property from the local landowners. Witness and Aztec observed military trucks going in and out of the area for days after the crash. The craft was then transported to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The disc incorporated large rings of metal which revolved around a central stabilized cabin. There were no rivets, bolts, screws, or signs of welding. People in Aztec carefully guarded their words as the accounts of the crash disc. Aztec citizens are still being monitored by the military to this day. One elderly woman said her husband watched military trucks going in and out of the crash area for days. She said she was very nervous about the whole thing and did not want to talk about it to anyone other than her husband. She was asked if she believed there had been a UFO crash. Her response was, if something hadn't happened out there, how come the military rushed in? Why was the covered military trucks going in and out of the canyon? Why did they deny being there? And why were they buying the near and surrounding land where the UFO supposedly crashed? In Cambodia in 1972, at the height of the Vietnam War, a United States special operations team went out to patrol, came across a group of alien creatures loading various human body parts into large metal containers and sealing them. A pitched battle ensued, which resulted in fatalities on both sides. As the soldiers pulled back, the aliens quickly retreated to their craft, taking the body parts with them. As usual, a major cover-up was quickly enforced. One of the contacts in Wales, who I will call D to protect his identity, was approached by an elite intelligence organization called Group 5A. This group was formed by Margaret Thatcher in the 80s to work at the sites of the crashed ET craft in Britain. This is the first time this information has been made public. Even though Group 5A was formed by Margaret Thatcher, it is a UN group. Group 58, man called George, showed my contact a UN identity card with UN holograms on it. George then drove D to a clandestine meeting on the motorway service. It was here that George showed D photographs of human mutilations. They had been found near heavily guarded Brecon, Brecon Beacon, dumb in Wales. These photos were taken at a sealed off area where the UFO activity had taken place. The photos showed a girl of 16 and a boy of 20 who had their genitals removed, eyeballs removed, lips removed, and directly half of their skin was missing. George said, 
Group 58 regularly found camper vans around this area where the occupants had vanished. D understandably had nightmares for weeks after this and was soon afterward followed by a high-tech American utility van with blue lights underneath it. I believe this was an NSA van. After this, D had his life threatened over the phone. The call was anonymous, but told him to keep quiet or his house would be burnt with him in it. George then called D and told him his life was in danger and to get the information out as soon as possible to protect himself. The next day, a gasman turned up, pulled out his ID the moment the door was open, walked in and checked the meter. When he left, a fire broke out, which nearly burnt down the house with D and his wife inside. The house was wrecked, and the fire brigade said the fire had mysteriously started in a bin in the room where the gas man was. After this, D, another man, and myself were investigating reports of dumb and missing children around a small village of Xanor in Cornwall. There have been many sightings of alien beings on the cliffs there since the 60s, and many UFO sightings around the area, and large amounts of covert military activity. Some of the UFOs had disappeared into the ocean, according to witnesses. Two years ago, at a Devon and Cornwall police project classified secret had gone on. This was a dig for the mass graves of children by the police. They had traced the reports of many missing children in the area. This is classified information that D managed to get a hold of from his contacts. Once again, this is the first time this information is being made public. From that, I can gather the police did not want, did not find any bodies, and the digging area was walled off from the public. I believe the police were looking in the wrong place because the activity seems to be coming from underground. When the poet D.H. Lawrence stayed at a small cottage in Xanor, he heard explosions coming from deep underground. Alistair Crawley, who was an MI6 agent, spent much time in Xanor. As Saul already stated, MI6 and the CIA are heavily involved in the alien agenda. I believe Alistair Crawley was up to his neck in it. Alistair Crawley had performed many satanic rituals at the cottage in Xanor. There seems to be a close connection with Satanism and the Greys and Reptilians. At this cottage one night after Crawley left, that a woman named Kay Cox died of a stroke and her husband went insane and ended up in the Bodmin Mental Asylum. The man said a reptilian being had materialized in the home and I believe Kay Cox died of fright after seeing this. The police files pertaining her death were stolen from the police station after this. Alistair Crawley was also at the Montauk in New York when the project was in full swing and there was a quantum energy grid line that ran from Montauk to Zenor and the men and toll ancient stones in Cornwall. After the fire at Dee's house, everything had gone quiet for a couple of years. All of a sudden, after two days into our missing children investigation at Denor, Dee had men outside of his bedroom window shining lights in. This is an intimidation tactic used by int intelligence agencies. I have only scratched the surface of what is going on in Zenor, as there is not room to go into it here. The bigger picture will be made public soon. So what is going on with these human mutation, mutilations and missing people? The truth of the matter is the greys and reptilians feed off the glandular secretions and hormones through a type of osmosis. This is why major organs are taken from people. Your mind may not want to go in, may want to go into denial that this is happening, but if you start digging, you will find this 100% true. On the Crowded Skies website, there is a video smuggled out of the loose underground facility that shows greys inside vats absorbing these blood mixtures through their skin. Researcher Bill Hamilton and Tal Redacted, a.k.a. Jason Bishop, received reports from workers at the Deleuze Dumb who worked there in the mid-70s when it was being jointly run by the CIA, greys and reptilians. This was before the ETs completely took over the base and kicked humans out. 
The workers said that the loose facility goes down at least seven levels. Level six is privately called Nightmare Hall amongst workers. They tell of bizarre experimentation in multi-legged humans that look half human, half octopus, reptilian humanoids, furry creatures with hands like humans that cry like a baby and mimic human words. Right there. Do, do I need to repeat it? Workers said the Deleuze facility goes down at least seven levels. Level six is privately called Nightmare Hall amongst the workers. They tell of bizarre experimentation, multi-legged humans that look half human, half octopus, reptilian humanoids, furry creatures with hands like humans that cry like a baby and mimic human words. Also, huge mixture of lizard humans in cages, several cages with winged humans, three and a half to seven feet tall bat-like creatures and gargoyle-like beings. On level seven are thousands of rows of humans and human genetic mixtures in cold storage. Humanoid embryo storage vats with embryos in various stages of development. Another worker said they witnessed scenes even more terrifying than this and refused to talk about them. One worker told Bill Hamilton, Frequently encountered humans in cages, usually dazed or drugged, but sometimes they cried and begged for help. We were told they were insane and involved a high-risk drug test to cure insanity. We were told never to speak to them at all. At the beginning, we believed the story. Finally, in 1978, a small group of workers discovered the truth. Tom Castiello is one of the security workers at the Deleuze facility. Thomas worked seven years for the Rand Corporation in California. He was transferred to Deleuze in 77. He estimated there were more than 18,000 short grays at Deleuze and also saw tall reptilians. Thomas knew of seven levels, but said there could have been more. He said the aliens were on levels five, six, and seven. Lower you go, the higher the security clearance is needed. The only sign in English is above the tube shuttle system that says to Los Alamos. The tube shuttle travels at Mach 2.7. Most signs at the Deleuze facility are in the alien symbol language and the universal system understood by humans and ETs. Thomas said the other shuttle connection from Deleuze went to Page, Arizona, Area 51, Nevada, Teos, Carlsbad, Detil, New Mexico, Colorado Springs, Creed, Colorado. Thomas also said there was a vast number of tube shuttle connections under the United States which extend into a global system of tunnels to further underground bases in other countries. Thomas Castiello said that below the second level of the Deleuze facility, everyone is weighed naked and given a uniform. Any change in weight is noted, and if there is a change in weight of three pounds or more, the people are x-rayed. At the entrance to all sensitive areas are scales, and that person's weight must match their ID card and code to gain entry. Thomas Costello smuggled many things out of Deleuze facility before he escaped, which included 27 sheets of 8x10 photos of alien and genetic creatures in the vats, one silent surveillance system camera, which begins with showing computer banks and vats, multi-shots of Nightmare Hall, two shots of gray, one shot of a terminal sign saying to Los Alamos, and 30 seconds of the shuttle train arriving, 25 pages of diagrams, chemical formations, schematics, and alien equipment, a copy of the new government alien treaty with signatures. Pages of original documents signed by Ronald Reagan, the then governor of California. Each page has Ronald Reagan signatures plus other political signatures and four alien signatures. Thomas Costello's flash gun, a laser type weapon used by security officers at Deleuze. Thomas put the original set of items in a sealed one piece oxygen free heavy plastic box 
five sets of copies in five different boxes in five different locations guarded by five different individuals known only to Thomas Costello. I understand these individuals would be scared to leak this proof as Thomas Costello's wife and children were kidnapped and then disappeared in Puerto Rico not long after this, now presumed dead. But if any of you are reading this, then please contact me anonymously and we will arrange for you to get a copy. I will be able to get it out on large scale. My email address will be at the end of this article. This is part of the interview with Thomas Costello before he disappeared. I am saying there are aliens in several underground bases in this country and terrible things happen in those places. If I die before it is proven, search for proof, demand the government admit it. If enough people demand it, they will find a way to explain the base or at least explain why they must keep it secret. There are many people that work at Deleuze that know me. I am challenging those co-workers to speak up anonymously, send a letter to confirm what I have explained. In the name of brave men, women, and children, and aliens that died trying to let the public know what is going on at the Duluth facility, Explo- expose the horrid place before thousands of more innocent people are tortured and die unspeakable deaths. The Rand Corporation, which is involved in the construction of these underground bases, has released a Roper report. This is now the third generation report that says, according to their research, one out of ten people have been abducted and implanted by gray and reptilians and returned with their memories erased. This report has been sent out and 110,000 clinical psychiatric psychiatrists in the United States. The Roper report also states that women are being accosted by reptilian ETs as part of an ongoing genetic program. As fantastic as it sounds, it is backed up by some of the world's top doctors like John Mack and many others. There are some 90 concentrated psychiatric scientists in the United States who are trying to form an organization to prevent secrecy on this horrendous situation. They say that because of the alien government treaties, this amount to the government amounts to government sponsored women accosted. According to the Roper report, 99.3% of the abductees are being used as ongoing genetic ET program are female and 0.7 are male. I have personally seen intelligent documents of studies into the gray and reptilian problem that show they are involved in genetic sabotage of the human race. The gray and reptilian alien agenda is so is too slowly and covertly taking over the planet in the next 30 years, reduce the population and run the planet from underground using the surface population as food to be taken when and how they wish. The British, Russian, and United States government is shooting down around one gray and reptile craft a month with particle beam weapons developed from Tesla technology. The Russians have areas the size of football fields full of crashed ETs. If that is not enough, is that if that is not a full-scale invasion, I do not know what is. The British, Russian, and United States government have become blood brothers, and the best friends because of the alien agenda. The Russian and U.S. Cold War was a sham, so these governments could develop nuclear weapon programs to counter the alien threat. The Cold War was a lie for the public to take attention away from the nuclear weapon program was really being developed for, not the Russians, but as a last resort against the Greys and Reptilians. The headquarters of the secret international governing body in charge of dealing with the ET phenomenon is in Geneva, Switzerland. The ruling body is made up of representatives of the governments involved as well as the executive members of a group known as the Bilderbergers. As I have said, the British, American, Russian governments are working very closely together because of the gray reptilian threat on the planet. Although the situation is so horrendous that these governments have shattered into panicked factions, some of which have been sold out and are directly helping the gray and reptilians. 
according to a very credible United States government insider, William Cooper. Behold the Pale Horse is a book everyone needs to get, guys. William Cooper wrote it. He is killed by the United States government. The most important meetings of the secret international governing body are held by the Policy Committee on Nuclear Submarine beneath the polar ice caps. The secrecy is such that this is not only method to make certain the meetings cannot be bugged, and it is the only place they will discuss the biggest secrets. It would be wrong and cruel of me to present this information without presenting a full picture. The Greys and Reptilians from Orion have been involved in an ancient war with the benevolent Palladians and other groups. The Palladians are a very powerful group and are the guardians of our solar system. I personally do not believe they will let the Grey Reptilian agenda fully unfold. They have helped us in the past are helping us now and will help us in the future. I know this because I have many paranormal ET contact experiences since a child. There is not room to go into detail, but this covered in the above top secret presentation with investigative journalist Dave Starbuck, type revel revelation audio visual Dave Starbuck into a search engine to find it. I have a very clear photographic evidence of benevolent Palladian ET materializing in my home and a box of channeled communications with these creatures. These photographs will stand up to a computer grain analysis test because they are all 100% real. I also do not have the knowledge or technology to fake them. One photo shows a very clear face materializing in front of me. I also have post-traumatic stress disorder from abductions and other contacts with malevolent reptilian entities. Again, these are covered in above top secret. There is a massive number of missing children in Britain, America, and other places connected to these underground bases. The figure in Britain seems to be at least 20,000 children disappear without a trace yearly. In 95, classified CIA and DIA Defense Intelligence Agency and FBI report is stated that 100,000 children and 1 million adults disappear and are never found in the United States every year. You may ask yourself, how is this being covered up? As was mentioned in the beginning of the article, the same group working with the Greys and Reptilians, which is MI6, CIA, MIEC, own and control mainstream media, like I've said before, 80% of it is owned by big bank, big pharma, big oil, military, I mean, <laughs> right there, the MIEC. In 2001, Scotland Yard Police revealed that it had been unable to find 300 black children aged 4 to 7 that disappeared from London in a three-month period. The 300 boys were reported missing in July to September of 2001. Journalist Yinka Sumana, an expert in missing children, told BBC Today program, Children are here one day and gone the next. In 1989 in Westchester, New York, which was the site of numerous UFO overflights, and reports of human abductions at the time, over 3,000 missing children reports surfaced. After extensive investigation by local police departments, the children were not found at red light districts or centers for runaways. Researchers and law enforcement officials were baffled. There is also a CIA finders case. This involved negative factions of the CIA directly involved in kidnapped children. It was revealed in 87 U.S. Customs Report. Customs and police raided a Washington, D.C. warehouse, which was used by the CIA. There they found numerous sets of instructions broadcast via computer network, which advised the CIA to move the huge amount of kidnapped children that were originally being held at that warehouse. Customs and police found large amounts of nappies and other things, and to keep them moving across jurisdictions. There were instructions on impregnation of female teenagers and also instructions on how to avoid police detection. The destination for the children in the instructions was New Mexico. 
The Albuquerque Journal ran an article entitled Why New Mexico Has So Many More Missing Children Than Comparable States Remains a Mystery. Much of this activity is centered around New Mexico, where the Duluth Underground Facility is. One male survivor of the MI6 CIA Mind Control Project, Monarch, described in The Illuminati Formula by France Springmeyer, the China Lake Naval Base at Woodcrest in California Desert. This anonymous man says batches of kids, numbering 1, 2, and 3,000, were kept in cages, piled up to the ceiling in large hangars. He says these cages are called woodpecker grids. They are electrified and the children are tortured with electric shock. Children are today still being transported to China Lake Naval Base by train, car, or air. One of the main delivery routes for children into China Lake is by plane from the Santa Rosa airstrip near Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove, guys, I mean, come on, it says it all. The Santa Rosa airstrip is supposed to be closed, yet planes take off from there nightly, and they don't put their lights on until they are hundreds of feet in the air. The Nazi geneticists and mind control scientists, Joseph Mengele, the angel of death from Auschwitz concentration camp, was brought to America after the war by MI6 and OSS, which became the CIA. In Project Paperclip, many other leading Nazi control, mind control experts, rocket scientists, geneticists, were also brought to America and Britain after the war. Joseph Mengele stayed at the China Lake base and the Tivistock Institute in London. China Lake Naval Base is in the same as Lancaster, California. It was in Lancaster the mass graves of mutilated children were discovered. The sheer amounts of evidence, the only conclusion I can come up to, is that certain sections of the United States and British government have sold us and our children to the malevolent ETs in our backdoor treaties. The situation is truly grim. Come on, people. It's time to wake up. The New World Order and UN, One World Government, is this rigid control structure to clamp the people of the world into a totalitarian vice so they won't have to tell us about the aliens. I also believe that certain sections of the intelligence community and the United States and British government are directly helping the greys and reptilians with their takeover agenda. Evidence seems to point to ETs promising these humans certain powers when it happens. The name of the powerful secretive group is the... The Trilateral Commission is taken from the Orion gray and reptilian flag known as the Trilateral Insignia. This shows how much trouble the human race is really in. Alright guys, now into what was going to be part two, but it was far too short. This part is very, very interesting. Mr. John Greenwald Jr. Apparently he asked for subject Bigfoot 1908 to present. It was signed by a David M. Hardy section chief record information dissemination section records management division. There's just a bunch of fancy government legal words in that. <clears throat> and then the second page is the same. And then we get to the third page, December 15th, 1976. Now I'm going to read you the typed out parts of everything, but there is, that's why I'm leaving the link. There is a lot of writing on these pages as well in, in, Personal handwriting, not, not typed. Mr. Peter Brine, Director of the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, West 6th Street, and Hosteler, The Dales, Oregon, 97058. Dear Mr. Breen, I have received your letter on November 24th requesting an FBI laboratory analysis of 15 unidentified hairs and tissue. The FBI laboratory 
conducts examinations primarily of physical evidence for law enforcement agencies in connection with criminal investigations, occasionally on a case-by-case -case basis, in the interest of research and scientific inquiry. We make exceptions to this general policy with this understanding. We will examine the hairs and tissue mentioned in your letter. They should be submitted to the FBI Laboratory Scientific Analysis, Analysis Section, J. Edgar Hoover Building, Washington, D.C., 20535, Attention, Special Agent Redacted. In your reply, please include available background information concerning the source of the specimen. Sincerely yours, John Cochran, Jr., Assistant Director of the FBI Scientific and Technical Service Division. And the next page is that letter from November 24th, 1976. Mr. J. Cochran, Jr., Assistant Director, FBI, Laboratory Division, FBI, Washington, D.C., 20535. Dear Mr. Cochran, I thank you for your letter of September 10th, 1976. I'm writing again to ask if you could possibly arrange for a comparative analysis of some hairs that we have here, which we are unable to identify. You may know something of the program in which we, through the part of sponsorship of the undermentioned Academy, are engaged. Should you not, I am enclosing an article which will partially explain what it is that we are trying to do. Briefly, we do not often come across hair, which we are unable to identify, and the hair that we have now, about 15 hairs attached to a tiny piece of skin, is the first that we have obtained in six years, which we feel may be of importance. Please advise if you are able to perform this task for us. Yours truly, Peter Breen, Director, the BIC. The next page is an article called Recognition at Last. Um, you'll be able to read it if you follow the link. It's a, an old newspaper article. Uh, I'm believing from the Washington Post, uh, July 6th, 1975. The next letter is August 26th, 1976. To the Federal Bureau of Investigations, Pennsylvania Avenue, 9th and 10th, Northwest Washington, D.C., 20535. Gentlemen, this institution conducts research on and into Bigfoot phenomenon of the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. We have been in operating for nearly six years, and we are associated with the Academy of Applied Science of Boston, Massachusetts. From time to time, we have been informed that hair supposedly of Bigfoot has been sent for examination to the FBI, has been examined by the FBI, and with the conclusion as a report of examination that it is not possible to compare the hair with that of any known creature on this continent. Will you kindly, will you kindly to set the record straight once and for all, inform us if the FBI has examined the hair, which might be that of a Bigfoot, when this took place, if it did take place, what the results of the analysis were. Please understand that our research here is serious, that this is a serious question that needs answering, and that an examination of the hair or the opposite by the FBI does not in any way, as far as we are concerned, suggest that the FBI is associated with our project or confirms in any way the possibility of the existence of the creatures known as Bigfoot. Yours truly, Peter Bryan, Director, the BIC. September 10th, 1976. 
Mr. Peter C. Bryan, Director, the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, Post Office Box 632, The Dells, Oregon, 97058. Dear Mr. Bryan, references made to your letter dated August 26th, 1976, concerning the reported examination of hairs by the FBI laboratory in connection with the Bigfoot phenomenon. Since the publication of the Washington Environmental Atlas in 1975, which referred to such examinations, we have received several inquiries similar to yours. However, we have been unable to locate any references to such examinations in our files. John Cochran, Jr., Assistant Director, FBI, Laboratory Division. The next page is a news article from the New York Times titled, It is Bigfoot, or Can It Be Just a Hoax? June 30th, 1976. There's a next article, next page is a picture of some sort, I believe a Sasquatch in a field. Continuing with the article on the next page. Continuing on the next page, which please follow the link and you guys will be able to read this. Uh, it's too much to read here. I wanted to share with you the actual conversation between Peter Brine and the FBI. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, Pennsylvania Avenue, 9th and 10th Northwest, Washington, D.C., August 26th. It is that same article that I just read to you. This institute conducts research on time, research on and into the Bigfoot phenomenon of the Pacific Northwest. But there's a lot of handwriting on it. Uh, Bigfoot information centers and exhibitions. Uh, just a lot of different stuff at the very bottom. It says a scientific and educational exhibit exhibition for all ages, the Academy of Applied Science, 65 India Wharf, 626A, Boston, Mass, 02110. Then once again, the same September 10th, letter. Then there's this, a memorandum to Mr. McDermott requesting examination of unidentified hair from the Bigfoot Information Center and exhibition, but they spelled exhibition wrong, which is strange because this is our government, the Dallas, Oregon. Recommendations, number one, that Mr. Bryan's request for examination of 15 unidentified hair and tissue be granted. Number two, and they are uh, signatured. Number two, if examination is granted, attached letter to be approved and forwarded to Mr. Brine. Details. The 7675 issue of the Washington Star News carried cut line and photograph attached captioned recognition at last concerning the recent published United States Army Corps of Engineers Washington Environment Al Analysis. The atlas contained information regarding the possible existence of Sasquatch, a.k.a. Bigfoot, the legendary creature of the Pacific Northwest Mountains. <clears throat> so, in June, July 6th of 75, an issue of the Washington Star News the pictures that apparently are going to be shared, but apparently uh, concerning a recently published United States Army Corps of Engineers Washington Environment Atlas. And if we can find that, which I've been looking for, um, contains information regarding the existence of Sasquatch Next page. 
is another member memorandum 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 whatever to mr mcdermott requested examination of unidentified hair from the bigfoot information center and exhibition they spelled it right that time dallas oregon the dallas oregon this atlas reported that a sample of reputed Sasquatch hair was analyzed by the FBI and found to belong to no known animal. Inasmuch as FBI laboratory experts had no records or recollection of such an examination, Dr. Steve Rice, editor of the Army Atlas, was telephonically contacted in Seattle, Washington, after checking, Dr. Rice was unable to locate his source of the reported FBI hair examination by letter dated 8-26-76. Mr. Peter C. Bryan, director of the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, Dowie's Oregon, inquired whether this reported FBI hair analysis was accurate. In my letter, dated September 10th, 1976, Mr. Brine was told the FBI laboratory had no references to such an examination, copies attached. By letter dated November 24th, 76, Mr. Peter Brine again corresponded with the FBI laboratory in, clo in closing a New York Times article dated June 30th, 1976, captioned, is it Bigfoot or is it just a hoax attached to the article contained a history of Bigfoot and the activities of Mr. Brine and others connected with the mystery? Mr. Brine's letter requested the FBI laboratory examine and attempt to identify 15 hairs attached to a piece of skin. According to the New York Times article, Mr. Brine's five-year search for Bigfoot is supported by the Academy of Applied Science. Boston, Mass., admission fees to his exhibit, and small donations from other sources. The AAS is the chief sponsor of the current Loch Ness expedition in Scotland. AAS is listed in the Encyclopedia of Associations as being founded in 1962 and dedicated to applied science and engineering. It claims 300 members and one staff member. Next page is a memorandum to Mr. McDermott. We requested examination of unidentified hair from the Bigfoot Information Center and Expedition, Dal the Dallas, Oregon. A search of the Bureau indicates contained no information identifiable to Mr. Bryan or the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition. The next page is a little more interesting. Um, December 13th, 1976, Mr. McDermott, to Mr. McDermott, from J. Cochran, Jr., subject requested examination of unidentified hair from the Bigfoot Information Center and exhibition, the Dalles, Oregon, purpose to set out background information concerning published reports that the FBI has analyzed hair in connection with the search of Sasquatch, a.k.a. Bigfoot, and to recommend that requested half examination received November 24th, 1976, from Peter Brine, director of the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, be granted, Oregon. Synopsis, background information concerning Sasquatch set out with request received November 24th, 76, from Mr. Peter Brine, Director of the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, for the FBI Laboratory Examination of 15 Unidentified Hairs and Tissue Related to the Search for Sasquatch, STS Division, recommends request for examination be granted in the interest of research and scientific inquiry. Current Bureau Policy this does not represent a change in Bureau policy in addition to its primary mission of examining physical evidence in criminal matters for federal, state, and municipal law enforcement. The STS Division Laboratory Branch has a history of making its unique services and expertise available to the Smithsonian Institute, other museums, universities, and government agencies in archaeological matters. 
and in the interest of research and legitimate scientific inquiry. Now, once again, the link to this is in the description, and I urge you to look at it because there is marks all over the paper, written, stamps, everything. It's crazy. The next page is a registered letter, February 24th, 1977. Mr. Howard S. Curtis, Executive Vice President, Academy of Applied Science, 65 India Wharf Suite, 26A, Boston, Mass, 02110. Mr. Curtis, the hairs which you recently delivered to the FBI laboratory on behalf of the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition have been examined by transmitted and incident light microscopy. The examination included the study of morphological characteristics such as root structure, uh, molletary structure, and cuticle thickness in addition to scale cast. Also, the hairs were compared directly with hairs of, uh, of known origin under a comparison, a comparison microscope. It was concluded as a result of these examinations that the hairs are of a deer family origin. The hair simply you submitted is being returned as enclosed in this letter. Sincerely yours, J. Cochran Jr., Assistant Director, FBI, Scientific and Technical Service Division. Page, Mr. Howard S. Curtis. Note, Mr. Curtis requested the letter setting forth examination results be directed to him since Mr. Bryan will be out of the country for several months. Now, here's something crazy. If you're following along with this, um, Mr. Bryan and his institute said they compared it to all known species on this earth, or continent, excuse me. And if they did, they'd come up with it being a common deer, wouldn't they? Most certainly, I'd think. So what's the FBI trying to pull? This is February 22nd, 77, requested examination, unidentified hair from Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, the Dalles, Oregon, Purpose. To report the results of the examination of hairs from the captioned organization, details by memorandum, Cochran to McDermott, dated December 13th, 76, we agreed to examine the hair simply on behalf of the captioned organization, a letter to this affected date, 12-15-76, was sent to Mr. Peter Bryan, Director of Captioned Organization. Recently, the hair sample, hair sample photograph attached was delivered to the laboratory by a Mr. Howard S. Curtis, Executive Vice President, Academy of Applied Science. This academy sponsors the captioned organizations. Hairs were determined to be from a member of the Deer family. Mr. Curtis requested letters sending forth the results of the examination be furnished to him. Since Mr. Bryan will be out of the country for several months, he requested the hairs be returned to him. Enclosed attachment. Continued over. Memorandum to Mr. Cochran. Requested examination, page 2. The attached letter to be furnished to Mr. Curtis setting forth the results of examination and that the hairs be returned to him. Next page is the back of a envelope. Now, if you look at a lot of these letters on this throughout the pages, there are <clears throat> a certain number written, 95 hyphen two one three zero one three hyphen six it's on all of that i'm imagining and assuming that this is the file name next page is the hair sample pictures of which are five inches long 
a little longer. Um, and I don't know. They don't really look like deer hair to me. Uh, deer hair would not be this coarse nor this long. <clears throat> the final page is March 8th, 1977. Mr. J. Cochran, Jr., Assistant Director of the FBI, Scientific and Technical Service Division, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Washington, D.C., 20535. Also on that paper is in handwriting, 95-213013. Dear Mr. Cochran, thank you very much for sending the analysis of the hair and skin which had been sent to us by Mr. Brine. We are most appreciative of your work and of Special Agent Redacted. My conversation with him was most pleasant and informative. Mr. Brine is expected back from Nepal within a week or two and we'll receive copies of our correspondence. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Once again, just a kind of bunch of information that I'm sharing with you. It doesn't have to be a debate in the comment section. It doesn't have to be where, you know, the King James Version of the Bible is the only right Bible and this and that. It's what you believe, and by forcing or trying to force other people to believe what you believe is not godly. It is not the way Jesus would want. You know, that's the way I look at things. Uh, I truly believe that there was one son, and his name was Jesus, and he was put on this planet or put on this earth to cleanse us of our sins and he did his job and died on the cross for our sins. He brought love and light into this planet, into this earth, and he should always be remembered for that. Other than that, fighting over religion and belief is not what he would want if you really think about it. And nobody really knows exactly what went down and what's right and what's wrong and this and that because no one was there. Every version of the Bible was written by man. Little pieces put in, you know. Who's to say these men that wrote the Bible didn't want to just create a little bit of something different? Put something in there that, you know, I know you know, I know you know what I'm saying. I just believe that the one true thing is, is we remember who the true king of the Jews was. The one that died on the cross for our sins. Other than that, I don't think anything else matters. With that, I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is your support, after all, that keeps this channel growing and going. I really do appreciate everything that you guys have done to create a community for people to want to share their experiences, ideas, and theories without ridicule, without judgment, just treated with the simple respect that we all deserve. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they're dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.